Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be taking a look at storage queues and how this simple solution can create some pretty powerful applications on Azure. Hi guys, today I want to talk about storage queues, and this is one of the most overlooked features of Azure because it is oftentimes looked down on by many developers as being too primitive or too basic for their needs. But in many cases, this option might be the one that you use because A, it's very inexpensive to use it, and B, the kind of throughput that many applications need don't require high throughput for messaging. And this option gives you a lot of variability in terms of cost and performance. So let's go ahead and look at this and why you might want to consider it for an option whenever you're building applications. So storage queues work a lot like queues on a service bus. Do you have a publisher, a, a queue, and you have a subscriber to that queue. And in this case, what you end up with is the publisher putting a message on the queue. And then you have the subscriber, in this case, asking the queue for new messages. While in a service bus context, the messages would just be delivered to the subscriber. And if there are messages, then those get returned back to the subscriber. If there are no messages, then the subscriber simply asks for new messages. This is, hey, do you have any messages? and the queue says no, it doesn't get any. And then the publisher might publish a new message. The next time the subscriber comes in, it's gonna ask for those messages and it's going to be delivered back to the subscriber. So you can see here that we have a polling style architecture. Now, for many applications, this is probably gonna be sufficient. And the advantages of doing this is because you don't have a lot of persistent connections going on with the, the storage queue. You basically kind of have to figure out what that sweet spot is for how often you want to pull the queue for new messages. So that could be once a second, it could be once every five seconds, you could create some kind of back off loop. You know, if I don't get a new message, then I'll wait two seconds. And if I don't get a new message, I'll wait four seconds, whatever that might be. I prefer the back off method just because it prevents me from accumulating a lot of requests against the APIs that the storage queues implement. And so you don't end up running up your cost. So if your application is pretty much constantly receiving messages, then maybe you don't need something like that. You could just pretty much do it on a pretty regular interval, maybe two seconds or one second, half a second, depending on what your needs are for your application. But at the end of the day, you just kind of figure out what that's going to be for your application and then implement it accordingly. And if you can live with a polling style architecture in your applications for delivering messages, then what you end up doing is saving a lot of costs on a queuing style architecture without having to pay for something like a service bus or some other messaging platform on Azure. So the biggest advantage of doing this is cost, obviously. Now the trade-off is throughput because storage queues don't have the SLAs that a service bus has or other some other messaging platforms. So you're not going to be able to scale these up to millions of messages per second. However, they will handle quite a few messages. And if that's fine, then it's probably going to be more than sufficient for your application. So a lot of times when I'm writing code, I write it in such a way that I will probably default to storage queues. And if I start to meet a point where the scale of a storage queue will no longer work with my application, then I will just basically swap out the code that is implementing a storage queue for something like a service bus and just go with that. In any case, it's pretty easy to do. I'm going to show you my code and you're going to see how similar it is to what you implement in a service bus. It's pretty much the same kind of code, but you just implement polling instead. So queues in Azure are really easy to set up. There's really not much to it. So you have a storage account and it's one of the four kinds of services that are generally associated with storage accounts. You go over to queue, you add a queue and you give it a name. You know, I'm gonna call it on queue two if I wanted to, or you can use the APIs to create these. Either way, you can easily create these and, and take them down without much fuss. And in each one of these, you have an access policy that you can set, and that will basically give you a connection stream if you so choose. Or in the case that I'm gonna be doing, I, I'm just basically gonna use the one that comes with the primary key or the secondary key uh, for accessing these since it's already there. So I can hit show keys and grab the connection string. So the code for these, again, is very straightforward. So I have here a subscriber and a publisher. So the subscriber in this case and the publisher look a lot like what we'd expect from a service bus. This one, 
I'm basically just setting up a queue client. This is part of the SDK of, available to Node.js. And you would have similar SDKs for Java.net and uh, another uh, popular library such as that. Uh, they can also be called by way of just your standard APIs that are available through REST endpoints. And once you have this, I'm just creating a function here that just creates a loop that publishes a message every one second. So if I'm going to run this, it will run it using the connection string and it's going to be doing it on Q1. So if I start this up, we can then just start node and we could do index.js. And that's just going to start publishing messages to that queue. So uh, if I come back over here to the portal, uh, we can see these messages actually in the portal, uh, which, you know, it's kind of a nice feature. If I go over here into my uh, queues and click on Q1 here, I can see the messages right here inside the queue. And you can clear it. You can actually add a message here if you so choose. So this is a very straightforward way to see what's going on when you're doing dev work is just use the Azure portal for that. And if I refresh this, we should see more messages coming in as that particular publisher runs in the background. Because I don't have a subscriber yet, they're just going to continue to accumulate. So let's go ahead and start up the subscriber here. The subscriber code is pretty much like what we'd expect. In this case, though, I'm using a polling style architecture to pull the API for new messages. So I'm using the same queue, say connection string, the same client library. Um, and this one is just pulling uh, the API every so many seconds. So I have basically just a back off loop here. So I'm basically saying wait uh, however many seconds. So it defaults to one. If it comes and finds new uh, new messages up to 32, it basically just resets the wait to one. Uh, otherwise, it just doubles it. So one, two, four, eight, 16, and 32 up to a maximum, which I set up here to 32. And then basically it's going to pull every 32 seconds. And if it finds new messages, it goes back to one. So the back off loop will then reset. So that's a very common way to approach polling the API so that you're not incurring a lot of costs by just pulling it every second or half second, depending on whatever your uh, need may be. So let's go ahead and start this guy up. And it, we should just get a bunch of messages since that publisher has been running in the background for a while already. So if I do node.index.js, we're going to see a bunch of messages come off. It's going to wait another few seconds. More messages come off. More is coming, more coming off. And we're still getting messages. Now, there we go. Now we're back up to where it's caught up with the actual publisher. And so we're seeing messages that are coming off the queue while they're being published by this this message right here so the publisher is 133 133 so you know there's a little bit of lag there but that's mostly due to the polling uh, nature of this application if i was to pull more often i would probably see those come off that queue a lot quicker and if i come back over here to the actual uh, page here and i refresh this i'm probably not going to see it we might see one here uh, if I refresh this enough, but otherwise nothing's staying on the queue. If the publisher and subscriber are both there, one publishing, one subscribing and removing messages as they come off the queue. So very straightforward there. So if I, uh, remove the publisher and kill that, so this is now going to start going off into a, a back off loop. So basically it's just doubling the amount of wait time that it has between each poll. So I'm not going to be nailing the API a whole bunch. Uh, and that way I don't incur a lot of costs uh, over a month period. If I'm only hitting it, say once or twice a minute, we're talking about one or two cents per, per month just to run that in that kind of context. If you do it about every one second, you're going to be occurring about 15 cents over the, the month just to pull it every one second. So depending on whatever your needs are, you kind of figure out what that is going to look like. So if I start this back up, We'll have to wait 32 seconds uh, before those messages start to appear over here inside of our, our uh, subscriber. But whenever that happens, it should run all the messages that have been queued up to that point. Uh, and then we will get uh, a list of messages and it'll reset the back off loop uh, to one second, however long that might be. And there it goes. Now it's just going to be running those messages as they come off the uh, queue there. So again, very straightforward, but that's how queues work. Really not much to it, but 
they are also very powerful and also very inexpensive to run on Azure. So with this, you can create very inexpensive messaging infrastructure. And if it serves your application, then that's what I would encourage you to use as a default. And if it doesn't scale well enough to your needs, then you can go to something like Service Bus. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com. And there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at The One Mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect Now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.